Amen. You can be seated if you wish. Uh, the ushers are going to come and going to wait on the congregation. We want to worship the Lord with our tithe and offering. Be a cheerful giver today because God loves a cheerful, which that word comes from a Greek word, hilaros, which is where we get our word hilarious. So be a hilarious, cheerful giver today in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Ron, would you pray this morning, please? Amen. This is normally where Aiden gives me the cue that it's time for children's church. So I don't know. That. He's normally down here in the front telling me it's time for children's church. And if I forget, he says, hey. So children's church could be dismissed at this time. What a beautiful day it is today. Um, it's a Thursday morning, I guess, we got out. We had some stuff to do. I, t I was telling somebody this morning that uh, Diana and I were getting to the age now that our idea of a date, a uh, date with each other is going to doctor's appointments. So... Went out uh, Wednesday, we had to go to Butler for, uh, I had a doctor's appointment with a urologist on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday, we had to go pick up her car. Uh, that was, was that, was that Friday? Okay, that's right. Yeah, Friday, yeah, we picked up her car. And uh, walked out the door, it's 54 degrees, had a short sleeve shirt on. I thought, well, they said it was going to be 84, and sure enough, it did. It got up to 84 degrees. And it's a beautiful day out there today, isn't it? Amen. So it's a, it's a wonderful day. The, every day is a wonderful day if you're a Christian. No such thing as a bad day. There are some days that are better than others. But uh, uh, we thank God for this wonderful, beautiful day. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I'd like for you to turn with me to Romans chapter 8, verses 13 through 14. I don't know about you this morning, uh, but I'm, I'm anxious to hear from God. We hear from God in different ways. Probably going to be on a similar subject about listening and and hearing from God over the next, uh, it's hard telling how long. Uh, we hear different voices speak to us. And uh, we have different ministers that speak to us. Some of you uh, have your favorite televangelist. Uh, and you watch them faithfully. You can tell by their voices, you know who it is and speaking, uh, and you hear them preach. But there was a guy one time that uh, they were having a revival in one of the churches, uh, local churches, that's closer to us, and one of the guys talked to me about this pastor or the evangelist that was preaching, and how wonderful the message was. And he said, boy, did that guy ever preach. And I said, well, well, tell me about it. I said, what did he preach on? He said, I don't know. He said, but it sure was good. We judge a lot of times whether or not we hear from God by who is speaking. Who's our favorite? And it's almost like a television channel. We can turn them on. We can turn them off. We can turn up the volume. We can turn down the volume. We can put it on mute. We can put it on hold. But I want to hear from God. I've heard from God at various times in my life and He has spoken to me in different ways. In different manners. But I'm hungry to hear a word from the Lord. Not just a sermon. 
I think that one of the worst insults that you could give me is say, Pastor, that was a wonderful sermon. I don't want to preach sermons. When I get up, I want to deliver fresh manna. A word from the Lord. And when we leave this house here today, we can say, not that we heard Pastor Dave, but that we heard a voice from God. That God spoke to us. And He spoke to us clearly and plainly. As believers, we should always be alert and attentive to listen to God and to receive His guidance. But sometimes we're uncertain about alleged leading. Is it of the Lord or is it not? In other words, did you say that? Is that what you really said? I'm not much of a believer. Some people practice this, but they say that they uh, put out fleeces. I've never been much of a believer in fleeces. That's where you say, God... If it's really you, then I'm going to wait and I'm going to ask for you to do this or I'm going to ask for you to do that. I believe that you can walk in the Spirit to the point to where you don't have to have God to show you something different or to show what we call sometimes uh, confirmations. I, I really don't like that word in the realm of the Spirit when we talk about the Spirit. In other words, like we say... God spoke to us, or He's been speaking to me, so He's going to send somebody to give me a confirmation. If God speaks, He doesn't need anybody to confirm His Word. As a matter of fact, when God speaks, I, you know, when He speaks twice, I don't call it confirmation, I call it double enunciation. That God is saying, okay, I've told you once, I've told you twice, it's like our parents did when they were young when we were younger. I remember my dad saying, now, David, I've told you once. And I've told you twice. And what he meant was that when he would say this, don't make me tell you the third time. I believe that God can speak to us here clear today in such a manner, in such a fashion, that we know beyond the shadow of a doubt that it was God that spoke to us. Uh, voices are very uh, unique. We all have our uh, voices. Did you know that one of the ways that they say that you cannot hide, that everybody has a unique laughter, and that you can't, once you really get that, you can fake a laugh, you know, but that real laugh that, you, you know, get your funny bone, and get you way down inside, and you just laugh, from your belly, that you can't hide that, and nobody can duplicate that. We have people that are considered impersonators, and they can impersonate somebody's voice. They can sound very similar, almost identical to that to that person, and you'll know who they are impersonating. My wife and my daughter, now that my daughter has grown up, sometimes if we're in the same house together, Brianna can be in one end, Diana can be in the other, doing whatever. One of them speaks, and I think it's Diana, or I think it's Brianna, because their voices are very similar. Sometimes, because they both have, both have very nice voices, there are certain television commentators. I tell them both that they could both be news anchors, that they have those type of voices that they're very clear and distinct, and they sound like they could be on television. Me, uh, you know, when we sang and we would travel around a lot, Diane and I, we had songs, we made recordings. We made, we made actually, if you believe that we're this old or not, we made a recording one time where we had... 500 LP vinyl albums made because they were very popular back then. They were the hottest seller. And we had 250 cassette tapes made. And 
we had 258 track tapes made. We still have, if anybody's interested, we have, we were going to make it big and we were going to sell and we were going to be the top sellers. We still have 499 LPs and 249 eight tracks and cassettes. But we used to travel around and sing and, and uh, you know, Diana would take the lead on some songs and I would take the lead on some songs and and we actually made a CD with our daughter Brianna also. And uh, then we made some duets and things of that nature. We actually made a recording with a group back several years ago and then another group many years ago. But we'd travel around and sing and, uh, and people would get a hold of our cassettes or our eight tracks ahead of us and uh, being there in person. And we'd get a lot of requests. Uh, but I always decided with all the requests that came in that I was going to sing anyway. Because Diane... <laughs> That, that uh, Diana, you know, there would be many requests for her to sing, and uh, she has a beautiful voice. Me, I sound like I've been calling hogs or whatever. But voices are very distinct. I can tell most people's voice, even here in this church, after we get to know each other, we can tell each other's voice. I can hear, as I was walking in the sanctuary, turning the corner there, I could hear Jean's voice. She, I can tell it's Jean's voice. And I can tell most anybody in this building, because we've gotten to know each other, I hear your voice. I know your voice. It's, it's you. It's not somebody else. But the Word of God gives us some clear principles. And uh, the Word of God, there's a voice, and it's a voice of God. I've actually heard uh, an audible voice from God speaking to me, not every time, but on certain occasions in my life. I remember them very well. I remember when I was called into the ministry that God spoke to me and He, and he woke me up in the middle of the night. And that an angel of the Lord uh, appeared to me. I was sleeping on the floor. And an angel of the Lord uh, spoke to me, reached down and touched my thigh. And he spoke these words to me, and he says, Go tell my father's word. I began, I thought that maybe it was a dream or whatever, but I laid there, and I never was the same since then. There have been times I've been driving in my automobile. It seems like that uh, God, when he, if I'm walking or if I'm driving, that that's when God gets my attention. I'm a musician. Those of you that know that, but I can drive. I don't listen. I don't listen to the radio. Very seldom do I ever listen to the radio. I've gotten in my car by myself, driven as many as a thousand miles by myself. Never turn on the radio one time. And it's those moments that God many times speaks to me. I guess that's when He can get my attention. But I want to talk to you this morning in Romans chapter 8, verses 13 and 14. Let's read that here today. But if you live after the flesh, you'll die. But ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. If you, if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, uh, you shall live. But as many are as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So our entitlement and frequent experience as sons and daughters of God is being led by the Spirit. Not led by circumstances, but led by the Spirit. And so often we hear this term, uh, we're not certain that we're hearing from God. We ask ourselves the question, was that the Lord, or was that not? Did God really speak to me? Was I mistaken? Fortunately, the Scripture gives us some helpful guidelines for evaluating whether or not a potential leading is God speaking to us. Sometimes uh, we 
kind of hear portions and part. And we have to, Diane and I, we go through that in communicating with one another. She has this habit, and I have this problem. She has the habit, I'm the one with the problem. So she'll be going the other direction in the house, and I might ask her a question, and she just keeps on going the other direction, talking up a storm, and the further she gets from me, the less apt I am to hear what she's saying. And so I try, even in uh, the privacy of her home, not to say, huh? Or I'll, I'll say, I, I beg your pardon, what did you say? Or whatever, and she's still going the other direction, knowing that I can't hear from her. So it's, it's either one or two things. She moves closer to me, or I move closer to her, or she raises her voice so that I can hear exactly what she's saying. So many times we've gone through that, and I'm sure you have too, as to where you get to the point to where you're communicating with someone, and you have difficulty understanding. And so, consequently, you might ask that person, would you repeat that? Would you uh, uh, say it again, or speak to me, where I can clearly hear? In 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 through 13, the Lord spoke, and this is what He said. He said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a, go and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Of course, we know He's speaking to Elijah. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in... Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Pause, please. And so, we have the wind. It's very evidently boisterous, strong enough that the prophet notices the wind like we feel the wind. And he was waiting and he was eager to hear a word for the Lord. It doesn't always have to be loud. You don't always have to be loud to communicate. Sometimes we judge whether or not a pastor or a minister is anointed as to how loud he was. If he was the louder, the better. You know, and it used to be, when I was a younger minister, I used to judge and merit whether or not I was a successful pastor or whether I was successful in my delivery of the message as to how many amens I got back in response and how loud the amens were. And the older I got, I began to realize that I've been in some Pentecostal churches especially where there were so many amens and they were so loud that it was hard and difficult to understand what the preacher was actually saying. And so it, we're not judging and we're not say, taking into consideration to merit whether or not it was good by how loud it was. And how much noise it makes. The louder the better. Okay, now... Being a musician, and some of us are different, some people like soft music, some people like it medium, I like it loud. I still, I, there are certain things that I like soft, and there are certain things that I like loud. I like my music loud. Say it loud, say it proud, say it loud, say it proud. But it wasn't there. And then there was an earthquake. Now let me tell you about an earthquake. I was in Columbus, Ohio, and Diane and I were evangelizing, and we lived, we lived in a travel trailer. We thought that we enjoyed our privacy and we had been many places back then that where most of the revivals where you went, you stayed with the pastor. They didn't put you in a hotel or anything of that nature. They, they put you uh, in, in their second bedroom or whatever. And, you know, you share bathrooms and all of those things. And But we got to the point to where we got tired of living out of a suitcase. So we went and we bought us a truck and we bought us a travel trailer. And we had our clothes in our travel trailer. So wherever we went, we'd just hook it up, 
close to uh, some type of facility there at the church. And we would live there. We would still have fellowship with the pastor, but we lived in a travel trailer. That was our abode. That's where we decided to live. And so we were in Columbus, Ohio. We were in a revival that lasted three weeks long. All kind, every night there was at least one person, at least one person that got saved, one person baptized with the Holy Spirit. It went on for three weeks. We saw miracle after miracle. We actually saw a baby come to life that had been pronounced dead, had been dead for 20 minutes. And a year later, this mother brought uh, this child to me at a state convention and said, here is our miracle baby that was dead, but we prayed in that revival and was alive. And to my knowledge, that child has grown to be an adult and is alive today. And so we thank God for that. But my point around all of this was that I took a Sunday afternoon nap. I, I, I don't know what it is about Sunday afternoons, but Sunday afternoons are made for church, and they're made for dinner, and they're made for naps. I can sleep better on a Sunday afternoon than any other day of the week. Just give me an hour, hour and a half. So I took my normal Sunday afternoon nap. And uh, Ron says he does his in the morning while I'm preaching. So anyway... <laughs> It's like one, one guy said one time, you know, that uh, a preacher looked back and he saw somebody uh, asleep. And so he said to the deacon, he's sitting next to the deacon, he said, hey, wake that guy up. And the deacon says, hey, you're the one that put him asleep, you wake him up. But I, I, was, I was napping on a Sunday afternoon, and when I was napping, there, so after I woke up, Somebody said, in Columbus, Ohio, you hear about those things in California, but somebody said, did you feel the earthquake? I slept through an earthquake in a travel trailer where most people's chandeliers and lights and everything were shaken. I was in a travel trailer, a 20-some foot travel trailer, and I slept all the way through an earthquake. Earthquakes are powerful. So you think that if anything's going to get your attention, it's high winds or an earthquake. But the Lord's voice was not heard there. So let's go on now, if you would please, Tori. And after the earthquake, a fire. If a high wind, an earthquake, and a fire, those things don't get your attention, but it was not there. And after a fire then there was something very interesting. It was just a still, small voice. And it says, and it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and says, What do you what are you doing here, Elijah? So the voice was in that, the, it was in a still, small voice. And that was what got Elijah's attention. So the voice of the Lord often comes to us in a still, small voice. A gentle whisper, rather than a dramatic event such as an earthquake or a strong wind, or a fire. I, I, if some supposed leading makes if some if some supposed leading makes you feel like you're caught in a high wind, set it aside. God's leading is not usually the obvious, as in Daniel chapter five. Now I've seen it happen to this, like this. I've seen literally interpretations. And tongues to where God literally, like a chalkboard, I could see a hand. And God literally wrote on the chalkboard. And, and, and I remember what God spoke. And in Daniel chapter 5, in verse 5, we see the where Daniel literally receives a word from the Lord where God takes it and writes it on the wall. Those are powerful things. But more often... God's voice will come to you and speak to you in a still, small voice. But here's the key. You have to be 
in listening distance. And you have to be tuned in to the right channel. If you're wanting to watch a hockey game, you don't turn it on the uh, onto a basketball game. Or if you're wanting to watch some type of a movie, you go to that specific channel. You have what we call the television guy, the TV guy. And so if you're wanting something, and we, we've done that, uh, Sister Karen sometimes will, will put something on our announcements page that, that on such and such a station at such and such a time that they're going to be posting or there's going to be such and such a program that's going to be on in case that we want to hear. You'll never hear unless you're tuned in. And some people can come to church and they can leave. And when they leave, they will have heard a fresh voice from God. They can leave here today and you can leave here today. Every one of us can leave here today with God speaking to us directly. But if you're not tuned in, that's the reason why some people leave and go out these doors and they have a whole complete different perspective as to the way the service went. Because they're not tuned in. Or some people are tuned in. I began to serve the Lord back in 1972. I was young. Many times I had emotional experiences in my lifetime. I had emotional experiences as a young child because I was raised in church. I don't remember the first time I ever went to church. Like the old saying, I guess I cut my teeth on church pews. I remember our first church building that my, di my dad pastored. It's called Twilight, West Virginia. I remember that church vividly. I remember it was just a small building. Now, I know that you've never heard of Twilight, West Virginia. But there's just a little coal mining camp. A little church. They had pews, but they were the type of pews, if you, I, I don't know, they were more like benches, like, you know, you'd see at a park bench where you have a strip of wood, a piece of air, another strip of wood, a piece of air, you know, a, 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 a piece of wood, air, piece of wood, air, and, you know, and then they varnished them ever so often to get hot. And then the, I remember one time that, that I uh, uh, had a pair of white pants on, and it's in the middle of summer. My mom and dad dressed it, and I was just, I don't know how old I was, but I remember this. And then it, it got hot that day, didn't have air conditioning. Our air conditioning was the old funeral home fans, you know. And those old funeral home fans, and I remember it got hot. And I, got, I remember coming home with my mom saying, David Morris, look at the seat of your britches. Well, how are you going to look at the seat of your britches? You know, and I, I, I look around, and finally I get home, and I had, you know, those little varnish marks on the seat of my britches. From where I'd sat down. But I always I had emotional experiences. Eight years old. I saw my first miracle that I remember. I literally saw a woman that was, that was uh, uh, paralyzed. And she got healed in a service. Miraculously healed. I remember going to the altar in an emotional experience that night. I remember that old pot belly stoves. I don't know why they did stuff like that. But I remember a one woman touching that. That's how we heated the church. And uh, she was speaking in tongues. And under a demonstration of the Holy Spirit, she touched that hot stove and just began to speak and an and, and emotional experience. And it scared the fire out of me, literally. And I remember hitting my knees, but I still never got saved. But it was in 1972 to where I actually gave my heart and life to, to Jesus Christ. I was 16 years old. I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ, and I remember Him speaking to me that day. I was just a boy, and I didn't have a lot of self-esteem, and I've told you before, you know, you see me now, and you might think it's hard to believe, and it, it might be hard for you to believe, but I had a bad inferiority complex. We were poor. The very first time that I ever went into a restaurant, I was 16 years old. I don't know if you ever have had them around here, Frisch's Restaurant. But they were they were uh, a sister company to Shoney's. Did you ever have Shoney's around here? They had Shoney's. So they, they were the Frisch's big boy, Shoney's big boy. They were the same. The first time I went to a, a, a restaurant, I was 16 years old. 
went there with my dad. And uh, I ate spaghetti. And that was what I had in the restaurant. And the people in the next booth to my dad and I were laughing. And I thought that they were laughing at me. Seriously. Maybe the way I was holding my fork. Something of that nature. I mean, we were 16 years old, my first time in a restaurant. And so, I, I didn't have a, a real high self-esteem. And so, I couldn't look up in front of people. I couldn't talk in front of people. I, I, you know, I could do okay on the ball field and communicate and things like that. But if I were to be the public speaker, I didn't know how to act. I didn't know how to perform. I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't know how to speak. I was always afraid I was going to say the wrong thing. Somebody was going to laugh at me or something like that. But it was God that spoke to me. And I began to give, give God all of these reasons as to why I, 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 I fought salvation. God began to speak to my heart. He was convicting my heart about how that I needed to turn my life and, uh, over to Him. And I was telling God, I, I, you, because I lived a pretty ornery life up until that point. Everything that, that was, you know, I was taught that everything that was good was, ba was bad. I wasn't allowed to chew gum because it was bad. He wasn't allowed to chew gum. It was a sin to chew gum, according to my parents back then. And then when I found out and I had my first piece of juicy fruit, I thought, well, that's not that bad. So if juicy fruit's good, some of these other things that they're telling me not to do has to be pretty good too. So I began to try to do everything that I wasn't supposed to do. I thought I'd try it. And I thought it was fun living a life of sin and doing all those things. And up until the age of 16 years old, I'd lived a pretty ornery life. I, I, I did things that I'm not proud of. And I did enough of them that when God really began to touch my heart and says, David, it's time to surrender to me. And He spoke to me. He spoke to me in an audible voice. I looked around to see if anybody else could hear what I was hearing. And, and nobody else. They were just you know, looking up, but God was speaking to me. And I began to, in my mind, I wasn't speaking out loud. I began to say, God, I, I, but I've done this and I've done that. How could I be? And he says, I chose you. I chose you. And he spoke to me. And in 1972, in all the years, that since 1972, in all the years since then, I have found that the voice of the Lord to be most often, most often, not always, but most often, gentle and quietly. Not forcefully, or, or, or with visible manifestations every time. There are times where He does that. But a lot of times, He just speaks to me in the quietness of my heart. And if you're listening, even right now, to God, He'll speak to you. And it'll be very clear to you that it is God. That it's not anybody else. It's God. You'll know the voice of the Lord. Like the Scripture that we read as our text. For if we're led by the Spirit, then we'll know the Spirit. And then it says in the Word of God, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. So if you live in the Spirit, and you walk in the Spirit, and you're walking in the Spirit, and you're living in the Spirit, God will speak to you. And He will direct your path. According to Proverbs chapter 3, it says, Lean not to your own understanding. In everything that you do, acknowledge Him in all your ways. And then it says, He will direct your path. So in other words, when you come to a place in your life and you don't know what to do, are you listening to everything that everybody else tells you? And it might even seem logical. It might seem like it's the right thing to do. But are you taking enough time to say, I've listened to what the doctor said. I've listened to what the loan institution has said. I've listened to what the banker has said. I've listened to what my mom has said. I've listened to what grandpa said. I've listened to what everybody else. I've even listened to what the church said. But what is God saying about this? Because sometimes God, God defies the logic of man. And he defies the logic of what we consider common sense. And he tells you to do something, and it seems like it's the most far out thing in the world to do. And to comprehend. And so there you are. 
And you say, God, but when God speaks to you, this is what you have to do. You have to grasp onto His Word. And this is where it's difficult, is that sometimes when God speaks to you, it takes an act of faith. For you to step out by faith, like a guy that one time had fallen off of a cliff and he was hanging on to a branch. He could hear the branch crackling. And he was hanging on to that branch and he was saying, Oh, is there anybody up there to help me? And he heard a voice and God had prepared a place for him that if he fell, that it, that it, was, it was a cleft in the rock, in the cliff, that he was going to provide for him to fall there and he would be safe. And he was hanging on to this branch and he says, is there anybody, somebody help me, I need help. He heard a voice say, let go and I'll take care of you. He said, who is this? He said, it's the Lord. He said, is there anybody else up there? Because sometimes what God speaks to us is not exactly what we want to hear. But God says if you move by faith, in many instances in the Bible, we see where God has done exactly that. It's not the most logical thing to do to wave your wand or your stick over a Red Sea and say, Part the waters, God. But God says, go ahead and speak to the sea. And God divides the sea. And you walk through the midst of the sea. And it's all in following the voice of the Lord. And God speaks to His people today. He still speaks today to His church. Open your hearts daily, every single day, for a word from the Lord. Open up your hearts. Open up your spirit. This last week, I, I told you what I do every, every day. Sometimes I don't respond immediately. Sometimes I don't comment immediately. But one of the very first things I do before I turn, I, very first thing I do, I got to tell you, is I turn my coffee pot off. The second thing I do is I put the cake up in and I turn it on. And I wait for that to brew. It takes, it seems like, might take 30 seconds, but I'm sitting there counting one, you know, I want my coffee. So the coffee finally comes on, I take my coffee cup, I go, I put it in the little cup holder that we have on our love seat, I take it there, and after I take it there, I put it up, I get my iPhone out, I click on to daily devotion, six points daily devotion, very first thing I do every morning. I go to Daily Devotions. Those of you that have not, we've got that page. There on your phone, you pull up Facebook. You go down here. I hit that little button. And right there, Daily Devotions. And it pops up. And I go right there. And I enter instead of acting as, as Daily Devotions, I ask, act as Dave Hutch. And then today's, which I think Diana posted, is a table in the wilderness. Yesterday, powerful devotion by Jan, a powerful friend. And that's the very first thing I do. I get a word from the Lord every single day. The very first thing. Because before I turn the news off, before I hear how bad everything is going on in politics, and how bad our economy is, and a leak in our security and everything else. I get a sure word from the God that made the universe that tells me, hey Dave, regardless of what's going on in this world, I am there with you. I am there with you all the way even to the end of the journey. I am with you in the midst of the fire. I am with you in the midst of the sea. I am with you in your highs. I am with you in your lows. I am with you in your poverty. I am with you in your riches. I am with you when you have. I am with you when you have not. I am the great God Almighty and I live and I live forevermore. And that's the word that I have from the Lord.
that He's real. Could somebody give the Lord a praise offering here this morning? I don't always hear it as Elijah heard it. I don't always hear it as Moses heard it on Mount Sinai. But sometimes it's that still, small voice. I heard a word from the Lord that changed the course of my life while driving in my car one day. Dedicated. You have to live your life dedicated and listen for God's voice. Dedicate and sanctify each day to Him. And you may be amazed at the remarkable plans that He reveals to you for your life. God bless you on this exciting journey. Life is not mundane. It is fun. This is a journey from the beginning to the end. There are a lot of things in between. There are some things that we endure that we don't enjoy. But in the midst of it all, in the midst of it all, God speaks to us. He speaks to us. He speaks to our hearts. I hear a voice from the Lord today. I hear a voice calling from heaven. I hear a voice that's speaking my name. I hear a voice that's speaking to our church here today. James chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. Listen to this very carefully. But if you harbor bitterness, envy, and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom doesn't come from heaven, but it is earthly. It's unspiritual. And then it goes on to say it's even of the devil. For whether you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then peace loving. It's very considerate. It's very submissive. It's full of mercy. I feel like God's speaking to somebody here today and He's just speaking mercy. You may have blown it somewhere down the line. You may have blown it. You may have messed up once or twice. Or maybe even more than that. And the world is speaking condemnation. And even the preacher is speaking condemnation. And even the church and the religious institutions are speaking condemnation. But listen, <laughs> listen, listen! God is speaking mercy. The world is speaking destruction. But God is speaking healing. The world is and the church is speaking, you're going under. But God speaking, my grace is sufficient for you. Yourself. You're speaking to yourself. And you're saying, I'm weak. I can't make it. I can't endure. But the Lord is saying to you, Hey honey, my grace is sufficient for you. For in your weakness, I am made strong. This scripture contains a wealth of insight into discerning the voice of God. Wisdom. Wisdom from heaven. So ask yourself when you're trying to discern a leading. Is a pure, wholesome, is this a pure, wholesome thing? Is it godly? Is it holy? Because let me tell you something, honey. God's not going to tell you to do something that's contrary to His Word. There might be someone that you've come in contact with on the job. Might be a secretary. Might be a workmate or something like that. 
And God's telling you how much better looking he or she is than your spouse. And how much more compatible you would be with that person. And how much life would how much how better life would be, how much better life would be if you were that person. But God speaking to you, you're married. And that's not holy ground. And God's not going to tell you to leave. Not God's not going to tell me to leave a woman that I've been married to for 48 years for something younger and better. And there's no such thing as anything better and anything prettier. God doesn't speak like that. He doesn't speak out li- outside of His Word. If what I'm thinking, is it going to, bring pr- going to bring peace? If what I'm doing, if this voice that I'm hearing or what I want to say, because sometimes, let me tell you something, it's best for you to zip it up. And I'm not talking about your pants. Well, that's true too. But it's best to zip your lip because you have to ask yourself sometimes, if what I'm going to say, is it considerate of the rights and feelings of others? Is it going to hurt somebody else? Even if they're doing something wrong, if what I'm going to say, to, if I, can, I can try to help that person and God wants me to try to help that person, but I need to be very considerate and careful that I don't do more damage than I do help and good. See, the voice of God isn't going to tear you up and destroy. And he, he, I don't see that in the voice of God. Is this leading full of mercy? Or is it judgmental? Will this leading bear good fruit? Or is it likely to harm someone or bring ill will? Is this leading impartial? Or is it driven by personal agenda? Is it what I think? Or is it what God thinks? Is it sincere? In the King James would mean without hypocrisy. Is it consistent with what I say? And how I live my life. In other words, am I telling you to do something that I'm not doing myself? Am I, am I doing something and I saying something to you, but I'm living a life of hypocrisy? And I'm telling you, oh no, you shouldn't do that. But in, in reality, I'm going behind the back of, of somebody else in the back of God and I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing. And I'm trying to straighten out your life when I've got a beam in my own eye, I'm trying to get a, 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 a just a moat out of somebody else's eye. In those verses 15 and 16, by contrast, James wrote wisdom. Wisdom that is not from heaven, he said, is earthly, unspiritual. And not only does he say that, listen how, how point blank James, get, James gets He says, not only, by contrast, James wrote wisdom that is not from heaven, is earthly, unspiritual, and then he also goes on to say, it's of the devil. That's the reason why Peter thought he was doing such a great thing. You know, at one point, Jesus looks at him and says, you, Peter, you got it, man. You're cool. You've got it. You're, you're really on cue because how, how did you answer this question? You, you, that Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Simon Barjonas, he says, great. It, it, it's great, man. 
Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the, the Father which is in heaven. Then at another point, he goes to Peter and he says, Get behind me, Satan. But Peter said, Hey, did you hear what the Lord said about me? He says, I'm cool. He says, He called me a devil. So in other words, sometimes our logic and what we want to say, self-ambitious, disorderly, every evil practice, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it says, To each one of us, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Diana was given for the common good. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, it says, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Eagerly desire spiritual gifts. So what you need to ask the way... What you need to ask the Lord today, say, Lord, speak to me. How many is going through anything in your life? I mean, anything. You deal with, maybe you not even personally, maybe it's not physical, it's not financial, it's not in your marriage, it's not in your home, maybe it's a family member. You're dealing with, with something, a family member, something, but you, you're dealing with an uncomfortable Anybody in this church other than myself, and I am, dealing with an uncomfortable situation. All of us, right? Pretty much all of us. What I want to submit to you today is that when you leave this house, it's not that you've heard Pastor Dave. But right now where you are in whatever dilemma and whatever thing that you're going with, you're going through, whether it be that family member, it be a per personal thing that you're going through yourself right now, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it is. If you just listen very carefully, or well, He might thunder it, on your way home. But right now, sitting in this service, He may just, in that still small voice, speak to you. And give to you the comfort or the answer that you're looking for right now. And that's my desire. Not that you hear me, but that you hear ye him. First Corinthians twelve and seven to each one of us is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. First Corinthians fourteen and one follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 14 and 3, But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. If I'm hearing from God, will the impact of this gift bring strengthening, strengthening or encouragement or comfort? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, Try to excel in gifts and build up the church. Ask yourself, will this prophecy edify the church or just me. And in closing today, Isaiah chapter 8, verses 19 through 20. Isaiah said these words, when men tell you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Now listen to me. I... I I don't even know if Ann Lander still has an article in the paper or not. But some people used to get as their source of daily bread from Ann Landers. Or some people that profess Christianity would go to the horoscope. Isaiah said, you stay away from that stuff. It's demonic. It's not of God. 
And Isaiah says, you don't go to mediums and spiritists who whisper God and who whisper and mutter. Should not a people should not a people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on the, on behalf of the living? You know what he's talking about? Say on to the law and to the testimony. If they do not speak according to this word, they have no light of dawn. They speak not according to this word because there is no light in them. So the Word of God is the ultimate. It's the primary provision that we have in order to discern what is and what is not of God. This woke culture to tell us, oh, transgender lifestyle is cool, it's okay. But God's Word says it's not. So when to try, if you stand with me today, when trying to determine if an alleged leading is of God or not, the ultimate question to ask, does this leading, does this voice, does this what I'm hearing, does it line up with the clear statement of God's Word, the Bible? If it does, I'm going to follow it. If you'll listen, God's speaking to you today. Would you get someone by the hand? To my knowledge, everybody in this building is a Christian today. Lord, we love You. We thank You, God, for Your mercy and for Your grace. Lord, several needs in this building today. They expressed it by the raising their hands in certain needs that are here today. Speak to us, Lord. Those that are in turmoil and chaos, speak peace to their hearts. Those that are depressed because of life circumstances, and things that have gone south and gone wrong in their life. They're depressed. Oppressed. Lord, speak joy. Speak joy into their hearts, into their lives. To that one that's hurting for a loved one. Speak assurance that everything's going to be all right, that that loved one is in your care, and that God, you never, ever, ever do anything that's wrong. Over your history, never one time have you done anything questionable, anything that was wrong. But in every circumstance, you've always done what's right. We may not understand your ways. We might not understand exactly how we're supposed to perform this as you speak to us. So those that are weak in the faith, Lord, we ask for you to encourage and strengthen their faith. That, Lord, we can lean on you and not to our own understanding. Because, Lord, we are assured in Your Word, as You have told us in Proverbs chapter 3, that God, as You've spoken to us, we lean not to our own understanding like the old psalm says. I don't know about the future. 
but I know who holds the future. And we place that in Your hands. And we stand upon Your Word. Like the old, old hymn says, we're standing on the promises of God. It was Solomon that looked back over history in his lifetime and said, Lord, I've looked back And I've discovered that as far back as I can look, there has not failed one good word out of all your good promises. And if you're faithful and you've been faithful to your word, we stand upon your word. You're with us in the name of Jesus. Would you just look up to God and say, God, speak to me today. And give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Be encouraged. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit today. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, love on somebody before you leave. You're not allowed to leave unless you love on somebody. Okay? God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy this beautiful weather. I've got a feeling everything's going to be alright. Amen. God bless you.